Hey guys, Mike, your host of Crushing Your Fear. How you doing? How's your fear doing? Gotta gotta get that thing, run towards it. All right. A lot of my guests run towards the fear. Embrace it, rechannel it, rechannel that energy into something good, you know? And uh, I was in, I'm in RTA, which is the, the entrepreneur group headed up by um, Ed Milet, Andy Priscilla, and I met uh, Rachel and Stephen Claiborne, and they have their own podcast. So I'm like, hey, why don't we do a podcast together? So um, they have the podcast called In It to Win It. Um, it's uh, brand new. They have a couple of episodes, but they've been through a lot. They're entrepreneurs. Uh, 75 hard. Man, he's, they, he's lost a lot of weight in that thing. It's crazy. You got to see him. He looks great. Um, his wife looks great too. Great couple. But um, we had a good conversation about a lot of things. And uh, um, before we get to it, hey, go on iTunes. Give us a rating and review. Whatever you're listening on, if you just you know click those five stars, everything is going to be okay. Share it with a friend. We're, go- we're growing up. Uh, our downloads are uh, increasing. But we're, I'm, f- I'm way far away than where I want to be. Um, so I appreciate it if you can, um, you know, s- share this with somebody that would benefit from it. Um, you know, we're just trying to give you the best that we can. And I'm going to get, you know, much uh, more, um, you know, uh, into it, more guests and more episodes. I probably do two a week. I always keep saying I'm going to do two a week, but I'm doing one right now. But Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling. Let's let's get to our interview with Rachel and Stephen. Here we go. Yeah, we have Rachel and Stephen Claiborne of uh, In It to Win It podcast. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Doing good. We're all, we're all in it to win it here. <laughs> and uh, we sure. we're both uh, all of us are in Arte, which is a you know entrepreneurial group. That's how we met through the Facebook group and. Uh, you know, I just like sent them a message. Hey, awesome. Let's, why don't you come on my podcast? Like, sure, let's do it. So we're doing like a dual podcast. I'll be on their podcast and they'll be on my podcast. Absolutely. So maybe give us a little background about you guys. Um, uh, and then I'll go, I guess I'll go into me. But like, what's your, what's your history? I mean, I, my, my podcast is based on fear. Your podcast is based on entrepreneurship and mindset. So we can kind of inter, you know, interweave that together. Um, I think it'd be great for everybody. So uh, maybe give us a background of what you guys, like a brief background. And I think you have some businesses going on. You've been through a lot a lot of stuff together. Yeah, so we've been married for 16 years. Mm-hmm. Been together for almost 20. Um, Woo. We've owned, <laughs> wow. uh, we've owned five or six. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Energy businesses together. We've been in oil and gas for pretty much my entire career. Wow. Um, and, and so sold our last company about a year, year and a half ago. And decided to go in a different direction, got the podcast going now. Uh, Rachel's got some new stuff going on and then I'm doing some business coaching and consulting. Yeah. So I came in, uh, into his entrepreneurial pursuits. Uh, what was it about five, six years ago now? Um, I'm an accountant by trade. And so one of, one of his businesses was booming and he was desperately needing some help. So, um, he called me in, which tells you how desperate he actually was. Oh boy! To <laughs> that was the first time we had kind of transitioned to uh, working and being husband and wife. Um, but I feel like we transitioned it pretty good, and yep. uh, yeah, it's been good. And I've kind of at first I started out; it kind of seemed like I was more or less working for him. But um, as the years have gone on, and we've our working relationship has grown, we've truly become I feel like business partners. Um, and so it's been really good. Great. That's and excellent. Then, yeah. I'm a, I'm a CPA too. So I know. Oh, nice. Uh-oh. So I've been doing that stuff. Yeah. For, and that's like, <laughs> uh, well now I'm doing the, I'm in the Miliari group with Ed's new company and, and it's just a total 180 because before it was great. I had my spreadsheet. I did my stuff. Mm-hmm. I put it in my folder and I went away and they paid me and everything was okay. But now I'm jumping into this, which is uh, more like helping families. So now I got to talk to people, right? Right, <laughs> right. I mm-hmm. have to get them products that they need. The families need this stuff. You know, there's a lot of families out there living paycheck to paycheck and they just don't know how to save and how to accumulate wealth. And this is what we're doing. We're going out and helping families, which is, you know, it's a, it's a total 180 but it's it's also like when you're doing the spreadsheet and you're putting it in a, a folder, really not doing anything for anybody else, really, like for yeah. humanity or anything, right? <laughs> so this is a way at least I'm doing something for people. 
right? Yeah, I'm actually um, in the process of transitioning as well. I just literally this week launched a um, a storybook box business. It's kind of an activity box for kids, and uh, it's whatever I can do to help parents make it easy because I know the kids are hanging out at home now, and a lot of people are looking at homeschool, and so working parents trying to juggle it all need some help. So that's been put me in a completely different spot. Now, all my information is in a spreadsheet that I refer to, but yeah, it's a little different to kind of be selling a product rather than a service and kind of transitioning to that. But it's fun. <laughs> yeah. It's no, how, how'd you come up with this idea now? So through quarantine, we've kind of taken a lot of courses. We kind of took the opportunity instead of like binge watching Netflix shows, we decided to like jump online and try to find some classes and stuff that we could take to kind of grow ourselves because obviously going online and going virtually is definitely something that came to the forefront when all of this hit. Um, And one of the classes I'm taking is it's a subscription box business. And I went into it. I have very little followers. I had no idea what I wanted to do. But as I've gotten further and further through the course, I've just been so inspired by everybody in the group, which is why I think all groups are so good. Um, because you get so much inspiration from people. And I was just sitting there one day and I told Steve, I was like, I have this idea. And I shared it with some friends of mine and got some good feedback. And so I was like, okay, this is, I'm going to run for it. I'm going to run towards this goal. And so I'm excited to see where it goes. Um, so to take a little bit of credit on that, Michael, <laughs> she's been, uh, so to take a little bit of credit on that, she, every time we have a holiday at our house or the kids have a birthday party, she's made, she makes an event of it. She's always had this artistic side and decorating side. So we've, I've been pushing her for years to, you know, interior design or throwing parties or whatever. And so what she did is she ended up coming up with this storybook deal, which so far it looks like it's going to be a hit. So it's awesome. Yeah. I've always wanted to have a creative take on things. I used to call myself the creative accountant and then people just thought that meant I was like cooking their books. And, uh, <laughs> so decided to drop that title. <laughs> you don't want the IRS to know you're the creative, creative accountant, right? Yes. No. Yeah, exactly. I was like, Oh, that doesn't go good together. So what about you? I mean, you were, you were an accountant, a CPA, and then you decided, I'm going uh, to that. What, what made you decide to, to do that. I just can't stay in the cube. I think that's what it is. Uh, you know, I, yes. um, mm-hmm. and actually we're talking about this COVID thing. I took advantage of it too. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm started this business with Ed and, um, getting ramped up with that. Got my license, got my insurance license, but also, you know, and then the, the accounting business has been just kind of, everybody's laying people off, not wanting to do anything. And I was doing some work for a company actually that had, that owned like 30 hotels, and actually, they went from revenue of, of over here to like oh, revenue of yeah. zero. So yeah. there was no more opportunity there. We were talking about doing things, but hopefully maybe I can go back there. But um, I also wrote, I'm starting to write a book. Actually, I'm almost finished with it about fear, crushing your fear after my podcast. Uh, so I've done some productive stuff over this uh, this period of quarantine. But I, I guess my story is that you know, I've always been, um, you know, I was a CPA and... Um, was with Deloitte Big Four audit firm a while back, and and then the whole, you know, the whole uh, 9-11 thing happened, and we were, like, right across the street from that, so that whole thing just kind of oh, wow. really uh, was not good, and all my clients went away, and then I got laid off, but then I jumped into, um, I, I, you probably heard of Sarbanes-Oxley, like the Sox. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I jumped into <laughs> yeah. that because they're like, well, who's, who's the expert at controls? I'm like, me, 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 me. So I just started my own company and I did that for a long time. I went over to England and um, lived there for like five years. I did work for companies there. It was really interesting. Traveled all over, came back, settled up in New Hampshire, had a job for a company that was supposed to do an IPO. So they needed a director of internal audit. They had nothing. They didn't know what, what, what to do. They just said either they have to outsource the audit function or have somebody come in. So I got the job up there and moved everybody up there. We had a house and everything. And then they didn't do the IPO. They postponed it for three years. And then by the time they did it, you know, I didn't have any staff. So they're like, you know, we're just going to outsource the whole thing. So I'm like, all right, that's great. So I always had the idea of opening a, a brewery because I saw the um, the uh, craft beer scene was blowing up in uh, New yeah. Hampshire. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to resurrect this idea. So we did a, 
I just took the 401k and uh, put it into the brewery and we, we, we made beer out of uh, Irish barley as the base. I always had this idea. Um, so made beer like that. People liked it. I had a distributor. We were distributing. Everything was cranking along. And um, then the, uh, you know, the just everybody else had, I guess, had the same idea. So like the, the amount of breweries in New Hampshire quintupled over five years. And, um, you know, the distributors were kind of demanding more margin and I had a small brewery and then the, the whole packaging changed too. Like it used to be bottles, nice, nice 22 ounce bottles. I said, I can make money on this and everything went to cans and then I'm like, Oh my God, my, my margin evaporated and the, um, the whole, uh, uh, you know, growth in uh, number of breweries is just like not a good, not a good thing. And then. Then the divorce happened, and then the wife took the, the ex-wife took the kids and went back to New York. I'm like, this is great. So I was kind of uh, just in my New Hampshire with my business there, and you know, I ended up on the proverbial uh, air mattress in the office. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> sleeps on the air mattress once, mm-hmm. and I'm like, all right, what am I going to do here? So, you know, um, I don't know. I just got to figure this out. So uh, it was just a big challenging time. And I got involved with Arte and I started my, my craft beer storm podcast on beer because I didn't like the podcasts out there. People were talking about their dogs and what they did last weekend. I'm like, (laughs) how is this about beer? What is going on? Like rambling, like about garbage. I'm like, I can do better. So I started my own podcast. You know, we have about 25,000 downloads to date. So, you know, not, not millions, but we're getting there. And um, I and I had to let fear that happen because of that incident. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? Nobody's really talking about fear. I'm going to start a podcast on fear because I know how to do podcasts. So I did. And I had people on and I just, you know, interviewed people. And I haven't had Ed on yet. I got to get him. But we had Ryan Mickler actually and Andy Frisilla just interviewed Ryan Mickler um, on awesome. a couple po- podcasts ago. Because I was part of his, uh, he has uh, Order of a Man podcast, which like he's approaching 40 million downloads, like serious stuff, you know? So, wow. And I was part of his, uh, iron council, which is a bunch of men that help each other. You know, there's not really like women can go over to somebody's house and have a nice cry. Like guys yep. can't do that. You know, you gotta, Aww. but, but they have a lot of issues and they want to talk to guys about stuff. So, and I had so a lot had of a issues. Lot of good yeah. cases of, uh, pivoting in your life. I know that's yeah. a word that we've used a lot, yep. especially this year. Um, mm. And so, yeah, fear and pivoting comes in there, comes into play. So how are you able to kind of transition that in your own life? Like what kept you going? What kept you motivated when you're asleep on the air mattress? Like what are what were you telling yourself? How did you get up the next day and keep going? Yeah, well, first it's like, all right, how did I get here? What did I do? What happened? And, um, <laughs> you know, uh, okay. So there's there's two paths you can go. You can either go in a corner and and put a put a COVID mask on, or you can get up and you can say I got to figure this out. So I just got a lot of self help. I listened to podcasts, you know, Andy's podcast and Ed. And then when they said they were doing RT, I'm like, I'm in. Let me know. And I, I I sent my application in, and they picked it. At, I think it was like thirty thousand applications or something like that. But I got in, and I'm like, cool. And I just surrounded myself with with people who had a you were, we were talking about mindset before had a better mindset than I did a mindset of growth you know and how do I grow from here you know what am I going to do and it's a lot of uh, meditation a lot of vis- visioning like I had a vision wall like my I took my wall right. and I put pictures up of like a Lamborghini and a jet those are bling bling things but at least that's expire I put a picture of my kids. I ran two marathons. I put my tags on there. I was supposed to do Dublin this year, but they canceled it, you know. They canceled Oktoberfest, right? I'm a beer nut, and it's like oh, unbelievable. No. I'm like, no, you can't do that. But they did. They canceled Oktoberfest in Germany. So it's awesome that you mentioned visualization because we're huge fans of that. We actually have big vision boards in our bathroom. You do. <laughs> the yes. big ones are in our bathroom um, because we like to see them every morning. But yeah, I'm a huge believer in those. And I actually keep them so that I can see from year to year. Um, and my our kids have actually commented because one of my old ones was out in the office one day and my son came in. He's six now. He was five at the time and he pointed to it and he said, Mommy, that's your car. 
I said, yeah, baby, it sure is my car that's now sitting in the driveway. And so it's wow. awesome. I, I'm a huge believer in the vision boards. I think it makes a big difference. You got to get your mind in order. And, you know, I, yeah. I, I, I do the meditation. I have my, well, I took a picture of my wall and I have it on my phone now. But um, I look at it every morning and I have pictures of my daughters and, you know, there's some um, motivational stuff that I look at and questions. Tony Robbins has those questions that you look at at the beginning and ending of the day. Mm -hmm. And then I read every day and, you know, I, I recently started picking up the Bible again and starting reading a couple things That's out of awesome. that. That's an awesome age old book which has a <laughs> huge amount of stuff in it. And, you know, I, I grew up Roman Catholic and kind of you know, in and out of the church. But I think, um, you know, that you have to believe that there is a God, you know, some people don't, but I, I, I don't, I don't know how things can exist without some type of force. You could think of it as a universe or right. things just don't happen like this. Right. So that's, that's kind of where I'm at uh, today. So. I know we completely agree with you. We both know that we don't feel like we would be anywhere where we are today. Um, if it wasn't for God. And so our big thing, especially right now is faith over fear. Mm. So I think that's been a huge, um, a huge positive for us is Absolutely. to have that. Um, Absolutely. I, I can't, I can't imagine not having that there. So I'm very grateful for it. You need. So what, what are some of the big fears that you guys have uh, come across, I guess, in your journeys? I know you've had businesses and I think on your podcast, you're like, uh, you know, you don't just open a business and it just automatically, you know, go to the mm -hmm. bank and, and take your millions out. You know, there's a, there's a big process. And I think you were mentioning you working for a company and you were like 23 years old and then they didn't promote you to that next level, although they should have because you didn't pay your dues and all that nonsense. So, and then you decided, you know what, screw this, I'm leaving, which, which probably looking back, I guess, is that the best kind of decision you ever made or what? <laughs> That's so, a fairly accurate recollection of events. Yeah, I mean, definitely <laughs> listen to the podcast. Um, <laughs> yes. Would I change anything? No. I mean, there's been a million times, Michael, I've thought, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to get a job. It'd be a lot easier just to go to a nine to five and come home in the afternoons. But the problem is it's once you get that taste of entrepreneurship and, and you've built something, it's, it's almost in your blood, right? It's hard to go back to somewhere yeah. else and start with someone else because you – you want to run things the way you want to run them good, bad, or indifferent. And I mean, I'm an entrepreneur at heart. I always have been, and I don't see me doing anything else but that just, just because I, I, I like the thrill of the hunt, right? It, it irritates me. I hear Andy talk about it and I've heard Ed talk about it. And these, everybody's an entrepreneur these days, except no one's really been an entrepreneur these days no. and, and felt what those fears are, right? The fear of not being able to make payroll, the fear of not being able to pay my bills or feed my family or not be able to make payments that we need to make. I mean, those are all fears we've had over the years that, that you have to overcome. Um, and you've got to get your mind right to do that. It's, it's like I said, in that podcast that you listen to, it's, I, I literally would, would quit every night, but when I went to bed, I'm like, I've had enough. I can't do this anymore. And then yeah. I wake up the next day and say, you know what? Screw it. I've got, I've got one more day. I can do it one more time. Mm -hmm. I can get one more kick in the teeth today. And I, th and that's what I tell people is success is not hitting home runs every day. Success is hitting base hits and success really is just failing over and over and over again. <laughs> until you finally succeed it is. and get used to failure because that's what you're going to have. Yeah, so, it is. It is. It's just fail, 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 fail. And then success, you know, but you just got to keep, pounding it and find out what that secret is, you know, but you know, every failure you get stronger and better and you know what you did wrong. And, um, yep. you know, but it's, you know, it's a hard thing to fail, you know, especially business, you know, I mean the brewery, um, I put all my money into it and I'm like, okay. Yeah. And then the family's gone. I'm like, what the hell did I do to myself? And, but that was it. Everything happens for you rather than to you. Right. This is what exactly. Ed says all the time. And, and it's true, you know, um, uh, you know, it, it changes you, and and I know, like we talk about God, but there's got to be some type of, um, you know, reason why why things happen. Right, and I think with every time, any time a business didn't necessarily go the way we had hoped, we could always we always found ourselves looking back, feeling like you know we've grown. Even if our bank account didn't grow the way that we had hoped it was going to grow, <laughs> we definitely always grew as people and as business people. And um, 
And so that's always a win. It's all, it's hard when it's not like necessarily correlated with the financial win, but you feel like you can always take something. And, and I hate that, um, you know, we've, we have friends who we can't talk business about because when it gets down to talking about those failures, it gets really uncomfortable for other people sometimes. And they have a hard time relating or understanding, or they all of a sudden kind of like scoot back a little bit, like, like it's like germs that are going to get, going to get on them. But, um, but I really feel like anybody that's going to consider going out on their own, starting a business, being an entrepreneur, like you have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And a lot of times that's being scared and that it's okay. And then if you fail, it's a learning lesson yeah. and you move on. Well, you know, I had a, an article that I did not too long ago about fear. And, and my, my big thing with fear is you've got two types of people that use fear, right? Either fear cripples you and, and it paralyzes you and you can't move. Or you use fear as a motivator and you choose, you get to choose that. Everybody gets to choose how they use that fear. But for us, I think we've always used that as a motivator because we didn't like the situation we're in. We knew what control we had over certain things and we chose to move that ball forward and stop worrying so much and, and fearing the things we had zero control over. It's like when this COVID thing hit, I remember I think a week after it hit Michael, me and her were having a conversation and she was she was worried about everything going on. I said, you know, there's only a few things we can control. We can control our family. We can control what we do in this time when we're locked down. And, and that's about it. Outside of that, we don't need to worry about anything else because we can't change it. And and so that's what we've done. Just like you, we, we took the time to I, – I took the time to do 75 hard and lose another 47 pounds awesome. during, during COVID. <laughs> um, she started working out a ton too and then started building businesses and going after it. So – um, I think anybody that wants to be an entrepreneur or is trying to better their situation in life, period, you've got to be able to figure out how to conquer that fear and, and push through it and, and know that in fear is where growth happens. That's, that's what I tell people. Mm -hmm. If you're, if you're in pain, then growth is happening. If you're comfortable, then you're not getting anywhere. You're spinning your wheels. Yeah. And I think with us going back to, you know, our foundation is our faith and, because of that, it helps us navigate. It helps us navigate fear. It helps us handle fear because we have an unwavering belief that we were put on this earth for a purpose and for a reason. And, you know, we were talking about the vision boards. It's not just about the fancy cars and the big house. It's not about the superficial stuff. It's about there's this urgency. There's this yearning inside of your gut that's like, I can do more mm. and I am meant for more. Um, and it's oh, yeah. just that unwavering feeling that just stays there and it just keeps going. Yeah. But fear is fear and uh, failure is normal in, in entrepreneurship. And a lot of people, yeah, I'm an entrepreneur. And then they hit one failure and it's like, oh, well, I guess, <laughs> uh oh, I guess it, that didn't work out. Whoops. You know, and then they go back to normal. But also fear, uh, you know, and when you're in businesses, I call them walls. Like when I had my brewery, there was uh, walls that were thrown up. It's like, all right, I have to finish this tap room. And the, uh, you know, I was supposed to get a, uh, a loan, but the plumbers, you know, gave me a finance company and I supposed to get a loan. And he was in the middle of just doing everything in the, in the whole building. And, um, uh, apparently I called the finance company and said, yeah, I'm gonna get a loan. I was like, oh, that's a commercial loan. We don't do uh, commercial loans. We only do residential. I'm like, what are you talking about? So I went back to him. I said, dude, you know, you gave me this company and, and now I, I, I'll get you the money. But he's like, no, I need, I need money now. I'm stopping. So he's just stopped. So I this huge wall. Like I'm ready. I, I pumped a lot of money. I'm ready to open. So what I had to do is I had to find another plumber. So I went to the city and I'm like, all right, I want to fire this guy. And he's like, why? What happened? Well, he told me I can get a financing and I can't. It's like, all right, write me a letter and we'll fire him. I'm like, cool. <laughs> So we revoked his license and I got another plumber to come in and finish the job and we gave him a license and then we got it done. But that's the stuff you got to, you can't just like abandon stuff. You have to figure it out, you know, and there was a lot of walls and the wall gets thrown up. So you either got to, you got to go around the wall, scale the wall, tunnel under the wall, or sometimes you just got to blast through it, you know, and get, get that wall right. down. But you, so you have, but you have to push forward, push through that fear, push through that obstacle and get it done. You don't want to hurt other people. And you don't want to do something dishonest, but 
if you got a goal, you got to, you just got to go for it. Absolutely. I agree with that a hundred percent, you know, and, um, there's uh there's always this book. Well, I don't know if you uh, the power of positive thinking by Norman Vincent Peale. We were talking about God. Uh, he's like if if with uh, is if God is with us, who can be against us, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so, I mean, that's the power of faith and knowing that you, know, you don't have to believe in God. There's a universe out there. There's a lot of energy right. that are that's coming in, and depending on how you channel that energy, even the fear. A lot of people that I've had on the podcast to so like run towards the fear, embrace the fear and, and transform that energy into something good and use it as a motivation to go forward. Yeah. Absolutely. There's a lot of power in that for sure. Um, I know for us, there's been a lot of times in our businesses where, you know, it feels like we're trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. Mm. And so there have been a lot of instances where it's like, so you definitely have to go into business knowing that it's not a matter of if something's going to go wrong. It's a matter of when is something going to go wrong? Because even if you're on the right track, things are going to happen. And I think, um, I think that's a big indicator of people who succeed and people who quit is I think some people go into it with the notion of if this is what I'm meant to be doing, then everything's going to fall in place every single day. And so then they get tripped up when something comes up that they weren't expecting. And I think those that trudge forward and reach the highest uh, levels are the ones that it's not that they never hit any obstacles. It's just, they figured out how it's like grit. They just kept going. They figured it out and kept pushing forward. It's It's not about resources. Yeah. And my personality, Michael, to be honest with you is more like square peg into a round hole. Let's just get a bigger hammer. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) it's funny we had uh we uh we had to prepare the floors they're just saying hammers like a jackhammer and there was like this beauty salon next door and every time we like jackhammer to the floor like what's going on all my you know all the all the stuff is falling off the wall i'm like we just five more minutes five more minutes and then we just like (laughs) like and like three hours later they're like what's going on i thought it was five i think we're five more minutes five more minutes (laughs) it was funny (laughs) you got to get that jackhammer out and you know get it and it's called the granite state for a reason right there's like granite you know like you got to get rid of that stuff so what are you gonna do but that's that's my story about the nail salon next door but um (laughs) yeah i mean i you know you just gotta yeah just do it right and you know another big thing for us that I mean, uh, I think has been monumental is just the mindset, right? Is in getting your mind right on one, your goals, of course, but uh, trying to f- understand how the mind works and the mind was designed from primitive days to keep us safe. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's, it goes back into fear. Right. And it's when you get fearful or, or you're, you're nervous about something, you want to back away and you want to run. And, the, the what people don't understand, I've, I've actually w- uh, done this firsthand, was your body will go way further than your mind will. And, and you know, I found that in working out and losing 200 pounds was uh, there's a lot of days I didn't want to do it. I, I didn't. My body didn't feel good, but my mind was telling me, hey, just stop. And, you know, I remember one particular day I'm riding my bike. Wind's blowing. I'm pretty much a parachute on that thing. Um, <laughs> two miles in, I mean, I'm two miles in. My back's hurting. I'm not getting anywhere. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to turn around and go back to the truck. That's a good ride four miles for the day. And that's where it clicked for me, Michaels. I'm like, you know what? No, no, I'm not. I came out to I set a goal and I'm going to finish that goal. And I ended up riding 15 miles on that bike that day. And wow. uh, got done. And just that's where that's where the snap was. And I'm like, okay, if I can control this, I can control everything. So, I mean, there's, you've got to take control of your mind because your mind will take you to places that you don't ever want to be if you let it. And that's all fear-based. And it will lie to you. (laughs) Definitely lie to you, yeah. It's the path, the, the, um, you know, like we're talking about Ryan Mickler. He's, he's, he talks about the natural man, like he went the path of least resistance, you know, and, yeah. uh, and also Andy talks about the, the bitch voice, right? You, you're doing yep. something and all of a sudden that voice comes in. Oh, you can just hang out and yep. stop. Uh-huh. And you're supposed to go, no, 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 I'm going forward. I'm going to finish. But you lost 200 pounds. It's awesome. You went on yeah. 75 hard. Did you just do that or how did that go? No. So that's been like a six, seven year journey. Um, oh. the highest I was 464. 
um, decided oh. one day. Well, 75 hard you did in, when yeah, did you start that in May? During COVID, I yep. had already yep. lost um, 150 or so um, before 75 hard. And so just got my crap together one day and decided, you know what, I'm tired of being like this. I need to change something. So started dieting and exercising, uh, lost about 100, stayed there for a good two or three years before I finally snapped again. And I'm like, you know what? I got to change something. We were actually at dinner one night um, on the way home from a, uh, bir- my birthday dinner. And she's having a conversation with me thinking I'm involved in that conversation. And I look over and I'm like, I'm done. Like I'm done. And she's, she, of course she's like, what, what are you talking what are you talking about? Yeah. And uh, I said, I'm, I'm starting tomorrow. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to get the rest of this weight off. And I lost down, I lost down to about 300 um, and then game back a little bit. And right as COVID started, I, I was listening to one of Andy's podcasts on a Sunday night and he was talking about 75 hard. And, um, so I listened to what the program is and I looked at her and I'm like, Hey, I'm, I'm going to do this 75 hard thing. You want to do it with me? Because I knew my demons and my demons were Netflix and chill and gain 30 pounds during COVID. Um, so she told me, <laughs> you did not want that to be the I case. I did not want that to be the case. <laughs> so I asked her, she said, absolutely not. I'm not doing that to you. Yeah. He asked me, here it is. Here's everything. I can't remember now all it was. It sounded terrible. He's like, you want to do this with me? No, Mm-mm. but I'll support you. So I, I started the next day um, and ended up losing 47 pounds, got down to two, 262, 263, which wow. is 200 pounds lost. And, um, uh, never turned back. And what was funny is about a month into it, Michael, we were work, we were walking, doing the outdoor walk together. And I said, Did, have you worked out every day this week? And she's like, I've actually worked out twice every day this week. So she ended up doing the 75 hard with me. Yeah, yeah he she was, just, he was very motivating, but I wasn't going to give him the credit, you know, very good. That's all, yeah, I did it. Uh, I did it earlier this year. I, I just looked at myself in the mirror after like the holidays. I'm like, oh god, I got, I got to do something. So I'm doing it now. That's it. Boom. So I did the 75 hard, and then I did the phase one because uh, I was look. I looked in the mirror, and again, I'm like, I gotta, I gotta go back on this thing. So I did the phase one, and I, I'm now I'm taking the cold showers, but now I do. I keep doing them like every day, like those five minute cold showers, which are good. I think they're good. Yeah. Which, <laughs> Skipped phase one or didn't do phase one. And then I decided last week that I'm starting 75 hard over again next week. Cause I think I've got about uh, probably 20 more. I want to lose. I still have yeah. gut and love handles. So I'm like, you know what, let's go ahead and finish this thing off and, and do what we need to do. So um, I'm gonna try it one more time, see what happens. But how, so my question for you is how long have you been in Arte? Is this your first year? No, it's my second year. Okay. Did you just join this year? I think, or yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. yeah, it's my second year. It's a great, um, you know, a great organization of people, and you know, just to explain to everybody about seventy five hard. I don't know if they know about this, but it's a it's a program developed by Andy Frasilla, and there's a couple things you need to do, but you have to do it for seventy five days, and if you skip a day in one of these things, then you cannot. Uh, you have to start again at day one, uh, so it keeps you on track. You got to take a picture of yourself every day. Correct me if I forget something take a picture of yourself every day you have to eat correctly you have to have some type of diet eat well cannot yep. cheat uh you got to do two workouts a day uh and and one of them has to be outside it doesn't matter what the weather is you know put a put a bike in your garage and write that you know a stationary bike yep. uh and you have to read 10 pages of a book a day and no alcohol that and no uh, yeah that's the big one right uh, the brewery yeah i yeah. like I had a brewery and i'm like wow I'm like, all right. No, I told him, I was like, Stephen, we live in Texas. They're literally letting you take margaritas to go. They were. Yeah. And we couldn't. No, I was like, I'm like, "Ah." but I felt a lot better. You know, a lot of clear minded, um, very clear mind. And uh, I lost uh, that that, uh, excess weight. You know, I just, and I started seeing myself from the beginning picture to the the 70, day 75. And, I posted it and everybody's like, holy cow, what happened to you? I'm like, 75 hard. You got to do it. Here's the link. Do it. Yep. And I don't think you know, everybody's like, nah, nobody I know kind of did it. That uh, <laughs> Unless they were in RTA. If I sent it to RTA people, then they're like, yeah, all right, I'm doing it. Let's go. I think I think it's one of those things when you send it to people, because I did the same thing, because they were all asking me, how are you losing weight and how are you getting in shape? And uh I'd tell them and I'd tell them, Hey, go check it out. You should do it. And then it was pretty much like, okay, Steven's lost his mind. There's no way. <laughs> but you talk about the outdoor workouts, Michael. I have never walked or rode my bike 
more in the rain. I swear the first You got a lot of rain down there, yeah. Oh, we got a ton of rain at that point. And I was <laughs> just like, I'll wait. I'll wait till a little bit later. It's supposed to clear out. It would never clear out. So it's pouring down rain. I'm either walking or riding my bike in the neighborhood. And I know my neighbors are like, okay, he has officially lost it. Yeah, I, I did it in uh, hail. Like I was up, I'm up here in the Northeast and it was just like, I, I got to do this thing. And I was trying to look at a map and then I was looking at the storms coming in. I'm like, all right, I got to do it now. So I just went out and I got a, a hoodie thing uh, yep. and I just covered up and I took a, actually I took a video of myself. I'm out, I'm doing it. <laughs> so, and you just do your 45 minutes walk and uh, yep. you, you, you get in again, you know, I was kind of drenched, but whatever, you know, but it, I'll always remember that, you know, and it's good for your mind i mean it's more of a yes. your body is it's a it's kind of a byproduct of it because but it 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 just makes you think in a different way and it provides a kind of toughness you talk about toughness you know when you do uh, yeah. businesses and you know uh, that you can push through things and you do things like and you know like you read a book like i would never read a book in 20 days right no. but if i do 10 pages a day all of a sudden hey if I do a little bit a day, and then it trains your mind that you can stack things, just do a little bit each day, you know, and and then you look back and you say, my God, you know, and you can apply that, and it talks about it stacking, like do a little yep. bit each day, have some goals set. He talks about the five uh, para list, I think, Andy, you know, five yeah, things. If you do th- five things a day, you know, you look back and say, yeah. oh, my God, yeah. Absolutely right. And for me, that was one of probably one of my proudest moments outside of getting married and, and having our four kids was, mm-hmm. you know, cause I'm one of those guys with success that I don't celebrate my victories. It's one of those, we scale a mountain at the end, at the end, we, I look up and I'm like, Hey, there's a bigger one up there. Let me go tackle that one next. I, I've never really been one of those. that's really celebrated much. Um, you don't take the time to I, I never congratulate time. yourself a little and bit. With 75 hard. It was one of those that the night, the day that it ended, the next day, man, I was, I was pretty damn proud because that was one area of my life, Michael, I could never get control of. It didn't seem like wow. I, mean, I could build businesses and I could be a dad and a husband. But when it came to my weight, that was, that's always been my, uh, you know, I guess Achilles heel or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Achilles yeah. Heel. And to finally conquer that man was just unbelievable. And, and even now not doing it, I still work out five or six days a week. Um, I mean, I wake up every morning thinking about what time I'm going to work out and what I'm going to do that day. So that has definitely never been my mindset before wow. 75 hard. Man, you look great though. Because you were what? How many? How long? 400 and what? 464. Holy crap. <laughs> people, people don't, <laughs> brother, people don't believe that. And I'll show them. It's like picture. two of you. <laughs> I lost a full size man. No, we literally. Holy cow. Like his dad sent us some old pictures of like when we were first married. One of them was our wedding photo. And uh, we don't even have it hanging up because for years, like Stephen hates the picture. So, uh, but they sent it to us. And so we hadn't seen it in a long time. And he like looks at me and he's like, what the hell is wrong with you? And I'm like, what? That's a terrible thing to say. All I saw was a man that I love. Oh, how nice. All the way. <laughs> That's great. You guys are great. <laughs> But that's uh, that's fantastic. Yeah, I, I think that's um, yeah. But it, you know, the entrepreneurial journey is not a, an easy one, and um, you know, you have to e- expect no. You just have to expect no, and especially in these business I'm in now, it's just like expect no. And, and then I recruit people in. They're like, you know, if you invite ten people to a um, like a, a session where they learn about it, three people are going to show up, and then one of them might sign up (laughs) so it's all numbers and also you know going going in front of people talking about their finances and what you can offer them and how to how to how to do it you know you got to do like 10 of those and maybe you'll get one uh so but then you build on that and you get better and those those things increase but it's not a it's not a turn to switch on and all of a sudden you're selling policies like left and right and helping people so it's it's a long long journey so um so what would you give everybody? I guess, is there anything else you wanted to ask of me or I was going to wind it down, but. Um... No, I mean, I think, I think we're good. I mean, uh, I love the story with the brewery and your story and how you've overcome what you've overcome and just pushing forward, man. I mean, those, you're the kind of guys we love to talk to that, that have the grit to keep pushing through when you get kicked in the face. Cause it's a, it, when you're yeah. an entrepreneur and you're trying to go after your dreams, there's a lot of, there's a lot of getting kicked in the face and having to get back up. And, and yeah. I love guys like that. Yeah. Because, I mean, yeah. we've had to do that. Right. 
So. Was what is the Mike Tyson quote? Like life is great until you get punched in the face or something like yeah. that. Or, Every, everybody has a plan. Or everybody yeah. plans until they get punched in the face. <laughs> <laughs> that is it's so true. true. It's like slapping. It's like <gasps> punching you in the face, and then you're you're down, and you got to just get up again and just keep going forward. But um, yep. no, I appreciate um, I appreciate you guys. Awesome. I'm glad you're in Arte, and I'm I'm looking forward to connecting with you guys even more. And there's a lot of huge people in there. I mean, if there's somebody I can introduce you to. Um, or connect you with. Uh, there's a lot of great people. Just you know, reach out to them. Everybody's here to help each other. And um, so you need to get Ed on your show, and then while he's there, you can like give him a heads up that like, hey, you need to go be on that In It to Win It podcast. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I just talked to these people. In It to Win It. You got to go there. <laughs> So I'm I'm good I'm I, I have, that's a very high probability because I'm part of his company I mean come on man yeah you that's know, awesome I, I just yeah. got to get in front of him and then I'll ask him but I, there might be an opportunity later this year this, they're talking about getting us out in California and they might have a surprise guest I'm like he's got to come if I'm going out there he's got to yeah we, we got to meet there you go my goal is to have tequila on his deck that's what it is Ooh. I don't know if he knows that but. That's what's happening. You're going to have to send us like a selfie. That's what's happening. I will. With the tequila. Um, I yeah. will. I will. You'll, you'll know about it. But I appreciate you guys being on. And I'm glad Thanks to be part us. of your yeah, podcast. You. If there's something I can do for you, let me know. And okay. we'll just keep moving. Right? All right. Awesome. awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye. Yeah, that was Rachel and Stephen Claiborne of the In It to Win It podcast entrepreneur steven was freaking 465 pounds he lost my god he lost like 200 pounds over 200 pounds crazy but that takes determination willpower he was on 75 hard sharpened up and uh now that you know and they built businesses they're entrepreneurs and it's not an easy journey there's a lot of fear uh, in what you're doing just jumping in you know i mean what's going to happen you know, for for me, I mean, I opened a business and kind of everything, it's kind of my life exploded pretty much, but um, I'm back and I'm doing this podcast just to help people out, you know? I mean, you know, if I, if I can help one person with this, it's, it's great and, and Rachel and Steven are the same way. We're all here to help each other. We're all part of RTA. It's an awesome group of individuals. And, um, you know, I hope you got value from this uh, podcast today. If you did, please share it. Hey, share it with a friend, 10 friends. That's awesome. More, more the merrier. Give us a rating and review. Um, that helps me, helps everybody. Uh, so that we can just expose this to everybody who needs it. You know, I'm, I'm also writing a book. I'm almost finishing my book, Crushing Your Fear. How about that? Right? During COVID. I'm like, I got to do something. I got to write my book. So I, I started writing my book in May, actually. And I'm almost finished. Got my editor is looking at it. He's, you know, we're on a journey, and uh, I got, a, I got like a chapter and a half left, which I'll knock out this weekend. And uh, we're gonna get that book out there, and then we'll do the worldwide speaking tour. <laughs> if you want, me, if you want me on your show, Oprah, I need to be on your show. Got to do it, Jimmy Fallon. Got to be on. I don't know if they're listening, but send this to them. If you know them, send send this to them. We're gonna be on. So here we go. Um, I appreciate you listening in today. Uh, please be safe. Um, I wish you the best. God bless. And we're going to talk to you next time. Take care. <laughs>